hello and welcome to day six of the 21 day creative challenge today we're going to be chatting about filming your art and it is so important to think about how you're telling your story as an artist you can find lots of different ways to do it you can write about it and blog about it you can just take pictures and post them up on instagram for example or you could film yourself at work and tell your story that way and it's a super effective way of engaging with people who really love your art they they kind of want to see how you approach your everyday creative to-do list and they love to get a little insight to behind the scenes i don't know if you're the same as me but i actually prefer the how they made the film rather than the film itself <laughs> Now, while we're staying at home nice and safe, our creativity can go one of two ways. It can either make you feel like you're sparking with fire, you're literally on fire with ideas and productivity is just off the charts and creativity is just oozing out of you. It's almost like your energy is hard to contain and because we've been told to contain ourselves, our creativity and our energy is trying to sort of push those parameters in any which way possible which is i think it's really interesting because if ever you're stuck with creativity you should always give yourself a containment and your ideas will be so much richer for doing that and that's exactly what this lockdown is doing for me it's making me feel like I'm here, I've got to stay in focus, I've got to do one thing, and actually loads of things are coming in. <laughs> and my hair is getting bigger and wilder, and or oh, this situation can make you feel stuck. Now the idea of this 21 day creative challenge is that somewhere within the 21 days, there's something that's gonna spark that fire for you. And today, filming your art might be just another way of sparking your creativity. So let's get stuck into it. First of all, I need to tell you about why filming is really important. I, I am still camera shy and I cringe when I hear my voice played back. I can't bear to, to watch myself on video, so the editing process is awful, awfully painful for me. And I know lots of people feel that way. When I first got into filming, I thought it was a really good thing to do for my art business. But actually, as a surprise, it gave me three very important things. The first thing was that it gave me a routine to my creative process, because I started to think about what I did first, second, third, and how I would capture those moments throughout the day. And having that routine really established my creative habit. The second thing it did for me was that it, and I wasn't expecting this, it built my confidence. And I don't mean this in so much of a self-assured, bolshy, um, arrogant way. I mean it in a way of, it built my confidence talking about my art because I could film myself talking about it hear it back, watch it back, and I'd think, oh, that's not quite right, that's not quite how I want to express it. And I'd go again and I'd film again. And by editing and watching and editing and watching, I slowly started to understand how I wanted to talk about my art. And hearing that back and being able to just tweak it so it sat really comfortably with me, really built my confidence in talking about my artwork to other people. The third brilliant thing it did for me is that because I'd built a habit of filming absolutely everything, it acted as a brilliant diary for my professional development. So I can now look back on hundreds of vlogs and see where I've come from, how my skills have developed, what techniques have I picked up along the way, what methods am I using now that are different to maybe a year or two years ago. And that visual diary is so important just to sort of take a look back at every now and again because it's so hard when we're in the moment to think how our skills have developed or if indeed they've developed at all and by looking back it's a useful reflection it's a useful review and visually you can see immediately where and how you've developed 
I tell you another thing it's been really good for. My work has been stolen in China and over in America and reproduced onto all sorts of things. It's products that I wouldn't necessarily choose for my business or how I'd represent my art. And it's really hard to manage that situation. And very often when you get in touch with um, the, the perpetrators, they, um, they ask you to prove that you were indeed the artist. And one of my systems of proving this is that I record absolutely everything I do. So I've got a digital date stamp, which is very easily forwarded to these people who have stolen my artwork. That way I'm able to argue my case. And there's been many other benefits to filming my work. So much so, even though I still don't like watching myself back or hearing myself, I would now not not film, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I would now not never film <laughs> because it's got so much to add to me personally, but also my business. So that's the why it's important to film your artwork. Let's go through the how. Now you can treat yourself to some fancy equipment if you really get into it, which I totally have. Hook, line and sinker. I love filming the studio work. I love filming other artists. I love telling stories through the medium of film. But you can start so simply and you can start right here today. Now a few of you have actually um, sent in a little 20 second video waving to me of you in your studio. So some of you have got started on this, but I want to get you started off super simply and I'd love to challenge you today to make a film. Now, if you're new to filming and the idea of talking to a camera just makes you absolutely shudder and think, oh, do you know what? I don't want to do this at all. Don't worry, I've got a plan for you. When I very first started filming, I wouldn't talk to the camera at all. In fact, I couldn't look at the camera. It's almost like your soul being stolen from somebody. It's really silly, isn't it? But that's how it felt. So what I would do is I'd film bits of my day, me doing, but I'd never look at the camera. It would always be about me doing or close-ups of me painting the brush marks on the canvas and then maybe a wider shot when it's finished. So I want to give you a bit of a framework in which to create your film today. Your first shot is going to be an establishing shot. Now do you know at the beginning of these videos I will give you an establishing shot of the cow shed because what I'm doing is sort of bringing you into the studio, I'm showing you where we are so you haven't just been plonked into the middle of a random room that you don't know. You can be really creative with an establishing shot. If your creative space is just a table or a cart or a bag with your stuff in, there's an establishing shot for that too basically show me where you are. So that's number one. Number two, I want you to share the story with us. So whatever you're working on is film 10 five second shots throughout the process of you doing that. So I don't want you, I don't want you to film 10 five second shots one after the other. I want you to film it at the beginning, maybe a few minutes in, a few minutes in, a few minutes in, a few minutes in, da 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 you get it, and then at the end. And I want 10 five second shots. So now you've got an establishing scene and you've got a collection of 10 five second shots. And then your final part is to film you closing down that productivity, that creativity. So you might be putting the paintbrush down, you might be putting the pen down, you might be closing a book, you might be walking out of the room finish the scene. So what you end up with is an establishing shot, 10 five second videos and a closing scene. And that's your template for your video. Now, if you're new to editing film, a brilliant, brilliant place to start. And I'm not, what's the word, affiliated with these folk. It's just, I found it a really useful app when I started and it's called Magisto. 
Maggie Stone's like this brilliant video editor and through the powers of AI it will look at the algorithms of your video almost like looking at the energy of your video and work out how to slice it together for you and you're going to feed it with your establishing shot your 10 five seconds and your finish finishing shot now Magisto has various templates it has music you can choose it's super easy to edit and it's suitable for both Apple and Android phones and if you want to get all fancy you can add logos and texts and other bits and pieces too but keep it simple to begin with so once you've done that you'll then be given the option to save it and then you can download it to your phone. And if you've been brave enough to do all of that, I'd love to see it. If you pop it into the post on Facebook or I'll share a Dropbox folder, we can collate all of those together at the end of the 21 days. Because what I'm doing, as you guys interact with the 21 days, I'm saving all of your productivity, all of your creativity. And then we're gonna have like a bit of a story of the whole of the 21 days in a couple of weeks time. Time. hope you enjoy this challenge it's a bit of a techie one rather than an arty one but a little bit of tech will help you build your confidence talking about your art now of course you can get all fancy pants about um, creating b-roll for your films and um, subscribing to music providers for um, royalty free music you can get into all sorts of visual effects the list is absolutely endless, but my tip to you is keep it simple to begin with because if it's easy, you're more likely to establish that into your creative routine and that's going to help you much more so than thinking, oh, I've got something to learn, I've got something to edit and it's, it becomes another to do. So keep it simple. I very often work with other creatives to help them get more comfortable on camera. I think because I've been through the mill of, oh my God, I hate it. I'm able to make it a little bit easier for them in understanding how to get over that and how to make the most of these gadgets and this technology that we have, but do it in a way that really suits your character and your nature. I've recently been working with Hans who hates social media and he de definitely doesn't get into any tech at all. But using this three-step format, he began to feel a wee bit more comfortable on film. So much so, we were able to film a whole workshop the other day. In fact, we filmed two workshops and he's got them up online free actually. So for an extra bit of creativity, I'm going to pop the link to his floral workshop down in the comments so you can have a go at that too. It involves a little bit of foraging in the garden and... Um, I think he'd be really chuffed if he saw some other people who are not of his world having a go. So if you do have a go, I'd love to see those photos too. Let me give you 10 examples of what your five second clips could be. So say for example, I was gonna do a knitting project. Now this beautiful knitting project, um, it's one of those Lauren Aston designs and um, it comes in this beautiful bag and the wool and the knitting needles and the instructions are all inside. So how am I gonna break down a story of telling you I'm about to start knitting? <laughs> well, first of all, I'd film the establishing shot, like. But my second shot could be looking over the bag. So one, two, three, four, five. My third shot would be me looking in the bag. One, two, three, four, five. The fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth shot will be taking the contents out of the bag. Looking at the contents. So that's five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. 
So that only leaves two more shots to do. I could get the instructions out and with a cup of tea, read the instructions. One, two, three, four, five. The final shot would be me starting to knit and um, it would be brilliant to have a bit of a time lapse as the knitting got longer and longer and longer. Now what you'll find is doing things in bursts of five seconds is less painful than just pressing record on your camera and just blah, 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 blah. You'll try to edit yourself as you're going along and you'll lose that connection with the camera. So by just taking five second snaps, it takes the pressure off you to perform and get it right, but it also just gives enough interest in those five seconds to show a journey of what's happening. Do you recall when we were young, running from all things at once? Without thinking twice And I knew it would catch up And that we would be the ones Left behind mm, The stories I've been told Is it at all possible that you're knitting a pair of pants? <laughs>